So we're going to install our first box here. Yeah. Okay, now make sure that that's lined up with the line. Okay, I think we're good to go. Okay. Now, I forgot to grab uh, um, fittings, so we're going to take the conduit and just barely stick it inside the hole and secure it to the wall. This by no means is a OSHA approved installation, nor is any part of this trailer for that matter. Uh, all we're trying to do is get power between the stinking outlets um, by using the wall uh, clamps. It's not going anywhere, so that's what it's going to look like here in a minute. All right, I knew I couldn't uh, do it half-assed like we were trying to do it, so excuse my finger. Uh, we went and got, or I went and got actual conduit fittings. They're slightly different than what I had. I had a bag of these fittings that are for flex cable and didn't realize that I didn't have the right fittings. Um, these are snap-in for running them in the wall. These just pinch the Romex. And then these here are actually for flex conduit. So you can see the three different types. This is flex conduit. Um, this is for Romex in the wall. That pinches it, but it also allows it to go into a metal box, you know, if you're, if you're not going into a plastic box. And then there's these. These were 30 cents each at uh, my local plumbing place, plumbing electrical. So we'll get back to doing what we were doing. So as you can see, um, there's a screw, I mean a uh, uh, n n uh, collar nut, excuse me, um, that's inside here and it's just ran up. You know, I get them finger tight. It's not a hugely important. And then this is the clamp. The conduit actually goes into this side and you just screw it down. So if you're watching this video and you've never done electrical work before, uh, one of the things they use to find studs, you can go buy an expensive stud finder or you can just do this. And you can tell the different, you can tell where the stud's at because the sound gets, goes from hollow to like, I guess I would call it a tight sound. I know the stud's right there. That's where my box needs to go. We're a little short with the conduit. So I'm going to take, if you know anything about trailers, this siding is uh, like paper, basically, this, this uh, interior stuff. And so I'm going to take a piece of t scrap T111 and cut a little block. And what it'll allow me to do is it'll allow me to make up the distance and have something to screw down to. So I'll be able to screw to both the stud and get my box to screw down to something. So you'll see that installed here in a little bit. You can see how I ended up mounting it. You can see the pad, see the mounting screws. So I've got the same problem down here at this end of the, uh, you can see I put a temporary screw in just to support it down at this end. This time the studs on the inside here. So what we're going to do is we're going to again screw another pad here and then mount the box out on the end here. Um, so here's my run so far. Uh, again, I had to pad that out. Don't forget to install your conduit clamps. They'll help with the rigidity of the clamps quite a bit. So the run goes down that way. Those are my last two boxes. That's in the sanding booth area. This one is outside the booth. I thought I was going to have three in the booth area, so I bought three, three uh, outlet covers, but I won't need this one, so... The next run looks like it'll get me to the box, and then the last run will get me down to the end of the trailer. And uh, we'll cover that here in a bit. Okay, as you can see uh, from the last video, it's been two or three days later. I had to replace a big section of the floor here. <clears throat> that really wasn't part of the scope of the video. I moved the electrical panel into the wall, and, and did the wall and floor were rotten, so... I had a big big bunch of replacement to deal with. But we ended up getting the run done. You know, uh, same thing I showed in the last couple clips. Uh, it ends down there. The only difference being this box 
has the attachment for a flex conduit. And the flex conduit is right here. And that just screws on to this. And what we'll do is we'll cut it for length. And it will go up into that one that's covered right there. We'll take that out and go in right there. And we'll install this fitting right here. And this will screw into the other piece of conduit and then it will screw up into the box. And I'll show that when that's done. All right, <clears throat> excuse me, all right. So we got the flex conduit in, screwed in here and up there. It's such a short run, it didn't want to bend very well, so I had to kind of fiddle with it, but it's tight. And so we're ready to do the wiring portion. I'm going to wire up the entire run. All righty. So I'm going to go ahead and um, wire up the run. We'll do sections at a time. Uh, and I'm going to wire it before I've, I, of course, energize the box. There's a section of the run that also needs to be done in the garage. I'm not going to show that portion. It's outside the scope of this video. This was just to basically show how to do a simple wiring run. You know, if you're at home and you want to run one in your shop, uh, this would show you how to do it. And so we'll get to the wiring portion next. Oh, excuse me for panting. I save all my old wiring leftovers. I mean, not all of it, but the stuff that's worth keeping. And I put it in a tote for future projects. And it weighs about, oh, I'm guessing 100 pounds worth of wire there. Anyways, I would encourage you to do the same if you do a lot of home projects. And so <clears throat> I've got a portion of wiring in here that'll work. I'm going to use 12.2 or looks like maybe I got some 12.3 there. So I'll go through here and see what I've got. But... I'll use these in wherever I can, and then I've got a brand new roll as well. So we'll be right back. All right, all my wiring's ran. Um, I didn't show that just because you're just pushing wire through conduit, so there's not really a whole lot to show. Um, I, I leave about six inches hanging out of each box, and in this case, I'll cut all those off that are long there. And um, so one of the things that I was going to say is when you're pulling wire through, I wear these cheap gloves from, from uh, Lowe's because when you're pulling wire up through here, the edges of the box can be sharp and the edges of these boxes can be sharp and no reason to cut your hands up if you don't need to. So I ran a 10-2 wire from this box up to the main. I know it's a larger size, probably a no-no in electrical world, but that's what I did. So um, I'm going to go ahead and connect up to the breaker, uh, connect my ground and my neutral, and then I'll start doing box makeup. I'll show you the connections after I'm done. I'm just going to tie into that bottom breaker there on the side that the, that the Romex is on, and uh, I'll show you the results here in a minute. I forgot to mention some of the tools I'm using in this project. Uh, <clears throat> I use a pair of linemen's, wire strippers, a box cutter, and um, a power um, drill or impact gun or whatever you want to call it. Um, these are predominantly what I use to do all this stuff. And also, the run itself consists of 12-2 wiring. Uh, and when you go to buy a wire, that's, it's rated for, oh, I can't remember. I looked it up on Google. I want to say it's like 20 amps or something like that. It's rated for less if you're using it for power. If you're uh, transmitting power, I think it's only like 6.5 amps. But um, I don't think there's anything in here that I'm going to be using that's going to be over 20 amps. So, oh, and also, um, that's it for now. All right, so I made my connections. You can see that the ground is on the ground bus. 
the neutral goes on the neutral bus here and you can see those two wires attract, attached to the neutral bus go all the way up the panel and are tied into the neutral right here and then the hot wire comes up and goes into the breaker that's how you hook up your your run all right I have my first box made up uh, what you'll notice is I've already got the ground shoved in as far as I can it's a small box I probably should have bought a deeper box for this particular one because I got a lot of makeup in here but I'll get it all crammed in there somehow um, you'll notice I brought these pigtails out <clears throat> it's easier to do that in my opinion than to try to run one of the wires past to the uh, um, outlet or to try to tie them all into the outlet on different terminals so I'll just use those to tie to the outlet so I am gonna cram all that crap back into the box best I can and I'm gonna get an outlet and I'm gonna tie these two to the outlet and see if I can get it to fit all right <clears throat> I forgot to run a wire from the ground to the outlet so I went ahead and hooked one up to the box so it's tied to the box and the outlet. Don't know if that's to code, don't really care. Um, I ran a black wire to the gold side. That's my hot. And I ran a white wire to the silver side. That's my neutral. You're gonna do that for each outlet in the run. And I'm not gonna forget to ground my outlet this next time. But that's what your wiring is gonna look like. I'm gonna push this back into the box and hopefully it'll fit. Alrighty, so I got all my bo all my uh, outlets ran. Um, they were very some. This one was unbelievably tight. Uh, definitely should have put a bigger box in. The ones that have two uh, runs, one going each direction, those were I guess acceptable. And then obviously the ones on the end were just fine. So uh, we'll get power to this thing and. That's not part of the scope of this video, so this is this is the end of uh, DIY on how to do just a, a short run of of wall wiring and conduit for this little storage shop that I'm working on. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks.